Hello and welcome to the second video of the FP3 chapter, Vectors. Start a question on the screen for you. Pause the video now if you have time and give this a go. So 4, 5, minus 1, cross minus 2, 0, 3. There's no other indication in the question as to the order, so I've kept the first vector in the question on the left of the cross. So for the top element, I want 15 minus 0. For the middle element, 2 minus 12. And for the bottom element, 0 minus minus 10. And there is the answer. So in this video, we're going to interpret the vector product as an area of a particular shape. To get us going in this direction, a few very, very simple triangles here. The area of this one, half times 4 times 10. If you don't have a perpendicular side, you know that you need to make one. And that is 8 sine 60. So you get half times 7 times 8 sine 60. And the reason we're doing this more useful one here, we end up with a half a times b times sine of theta, which should be a familiar formula to you. Now this is useful because of how this connects with what we've been talking about. If we have vectors a and b and we use these as two sides of a triangle, we can apply that formula again and we get half times the magnitude of a, the length of this, times the magnitude of b, the length of this, times sine theta, which is something you should recognize from the previous video. The vector product, if we want to get rid of this little vector element here, this is a unit vector, so we can take the magnitude of both sides and we end up with magnitude a, magnitude b, sine theta. So using the magnitude of this, we can rewrite the area formula for a triangle in terms of a vector product where the two vectors are the two sides of the triangle. And the angle, of course, has to be the angle between these two sides. We can go a step further here and say that any parallelogram, which of course you can split into two congruent triangles, can use the same idea if it's defined by two vectors a and b. Add these two together, gets rid of the half. So the area of a parallelogram defined by the vectors a and b as the two non-parallel sides is given by the magnitude of a cross b. And we can take this a step further again and say how about if we have position vectors from a fixed origin o where as per the standard this is little a, this is little b and this is little c then we can use the vector AB across the vector AC and turn this into position vectors. Where you should know by now, AB is B minus A and AC is C minus A. And we can expand these brackets out so long as we keep the left of the cross on the left of the cross. So we've got B cross C, and then we've got B crossed with minus A. The minus is not necessary to keep on one side or the other, so I'll put that in front of the B. And then we've got minus A cross C, and positive a cross a. But we know that a cross a is 0. So we can write this as a half b cross c. And then I can turn these negatives into positives by switching these around. Remember, the vector product is not commutative, but you can change it if you remember that it has the effect of putting a negative in. 
and obviously if there's already a negative there it becomes positive so we get this So this is another way of writing the area formula and for a parallelogram the only thing you need to be careful of here is your lettering a b c here is fine but a b we need d here not c over here so that c becomes a d just because of the lettering on a parallelogram and of course because it's a parallelogram we don't have the half in front because we're using two congruent triangles. OK, applying this to a question. Find the area of triangle ABC where the position vectors of ABC are these things, respectively. So we have two formulas here based on what we've just looked at. This one in white, this one in green. I'm going to do them both to show that they both work, get the same answer, or hopefully I will get the same answer, uh, but if you're happy with just one of these, then of course you can stop the video as you please once you're happy. So I'll do the white one in white. And because there's a lot of cross products in here, I'm going to do these separately. So A, 4 minus 2, 1, cross B, minus 12, 14, 1. And uh, that is minus 2, minus 14, minus 16. And we've got minus 12, minus 4 is minus 16 as well. And then we've got 56 minus 24, which is 32. So that's this one. And then we've got B cross C. So we've got minus 12, 14, 1. Cross minus 4, minus 2, 1. And the top one is 14 minus minus 2, middle one minus 4 minus minus 12, and the bottom one 24 minus minus 56, 80. That's this one. And then the last one, C across A, so we've got minus 4 minus 2, 1 cross 4 minus 2, 1. Top one, 0. Middle one, 4 minus minus 4 is 8. And the bottom one is 8 minus minus 8. 16. That's this one. So the area formula is a half times the magnitude of these three answers added together. So the top element, minus 16 plus 16 plus 0, is a nice easy 0. Middle element, minus 16 plus 8 plus 8, is also a nice easy 0. And the bottom one, 32, 80, and 16, is 128. So the magnitude of that, 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 128 squared, and square root that gives us a half of 128, which is 64. It's an area, so we've got square units, whatever those units may be. OK, that was the method in white. In green. Here I might want to draw my triangle just to be clear which one I'm using. So I'm going to use... A, B, C like this. So I'm going to have this side here, B minus A, which is A, B, and C minus A, A, C. Now, of course, I could use any two of these three. And like before, I'm going to do these separate. So B minus A, that is minus 12, 14, 1, minus 4, minus 2, 1, minus 16, 16, 0. C minus A, minus 12, 14, 1, 
minus 4 minus 2, 1. Minus 4 minus 2, 1. Minus 8, 0. And 0. So my area formula is a half times minus 16, 16, 0. Cross with minus 8, 0, 0. And it's always nice when zeros come up here. It makes this process much easier. So the top element, 0 and 0. Middle element, 0 and 0. And the bottom element, 0 minus 16 times minus 8, 128. And as you can see, we're getting the same answer. And of course, whichever way you prefer, go for it. Using this, you can practice the questions from exercise 5b, and maybe I'll see you in the next video.